Right. And I'm like, oh, okay, what, what do you mean? I'm so shocked, I've never yeah. heard that before. Yeah. Is that true? He said it's in the Quran. Yeah, it's true. Oh, wow, okay. What, 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 is that, what, what is that about then? Like? You're like a wine heaven, this is about. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Heaven is amazing. It's not a place of constriction or something like that. Sure. Why do you have to... This life's a test, right? The next life's a reward, right? Why are you going to be forbidden things in the road when you're in heaven? Yeah. What about now? Like, I mean, why can't someone, you know, what, what's wrong with it now then? Because if you look at the Quran, actually, when it talks about alcohol, what does it say? It says, even though, I'm paraphrasing, something among the lines of, there's some good in it for you, I'm paraphrasing, yeah. it is forbidden for you. So there's some great wisdom behind it, right? But what was the first part? Okay, that is what you that, said. Was good. I, I'm just saying that the sentence it seems to imply that there's some good in it, right? And then you're telling me there's also wine in heaven, I would also imply that it's got, it inherently has some kind of good, right? You, you could, I heard someone say before, yeah. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just going on my top of my head, that there's no hangover in heaven, for example. So a lot of people in this country, they drink, then all the negative things come over, right? Yeah. Why don't you just take the positive things and leave the negative things? And, and they put in heaven. Yeah. yeah. Right, but what about here on earth? That's what I mean, because as a Christian, yeah. you know, we're, we're meant to drink responsibly. I don't get hangovers and like, you know, I enjoy actually making my own wines and where my wife's from, like we ferment it. And yeah. it's, it's like, yeah, so I think I was just surprised because before I had Muslim sort of condemning me for all that. And then I thought, oh, well, you got it, you know. Now I just found out, oh, you got it in heaven. Anyway, no, but, but it's I like, yeah, I see what you're saying, but what's this life about? When you're asking about this life, the most important thing is life, it's life's a test, right? This is a Christian Greek. It's life, we're here to do what God tells us to do, right? So if God forbids you to drink wine in his life, and he allows it in the next life, well, he, he, he forbids Muslims from drinking wine, but under the Sharia, under Islamic, in Islamic uh, society, Christians can drink alcohol. It's, it's, it's actually uh, allowed uh, in Islamic society. So. No, it just seemed a little contradiction to me, that's all. I just thought, response, I understand that it, there are bad implications, which obviously, you know, a responsible person, oh, you know, right. you wouldn't do stuff like that. But anyway, that's just a side. No, another thing Quinn is though is like, if you look at alcohol, it has intoxication, right? Some people argue it brings the spirits inside of you, which is why people are not these alcohol, but all spirits, right? Because it has some kind of demonic side to it. Now, once again, just imagine you keep the alcohol and you kept all the good things associated with it and you stripped all the negative sides, the spirits, the intoxication, the hangover, the health implications, you know, all these negative things, put it aside and you leave the good sides and you leave it in heaven. Would that not make sense to you? But you're just guessing that. I mean, Why not? to me, because I feel that wine can be actually all good if in we use world? it responsibly. Yeah. In this world? It's a big, oh, it's yes. a big if, though, isn't it? Because. Oh, the, 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 the cost to the NHS every year for alcohol-related diseases and accidents and so on is huge. Yeah, but these it, are the people huge. that kind of um, misuse the, the substance. That's yeah, all. but... but and there's many who don't, and actually, like no, but, I mentioned myself, I don't misuse it, is, is that, and I've actually, you know... But, but the, I'm not quite sure what, what the premise behind that is, because it sounds quite individualist. So because I can be responsible in my use of alcohol, therefore it's OK. The fact that other people are not like me and going to suffer terrible diseases and, and so on. Well, that's just their problem. <laughs> but but in a society that cares about the population as a whole, yeah. um, the fact that there's some people say you can take heroin responsibly or cocaine, I don't know if they exist, but perhaps they do. You know, uh, perhaps there are professionals out there who take cocaine regularly. I've been doing it for years and <laughs> never done me any harm. Even though the doctor down the road can say, oh, well, actually, you know, I've got 10 patients who've been killed by it. But that's their fault because they're weak and, yeah. hey, you know, they're weak. Well, for, let them go to the war because they're weak. But we are strong, and that's why it should be legal. It should be fine to take, take exception. I mean, the, Islamically, we're, 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 it's more collective. We, we, we care about uh, the, the, the social collective effects of something. So something like alcohol will be harmful, even if there are individuals like you who can handle it responsibly. But there are many others who can't, who don't have your virtues or your strengths. I get. I mean, we wouldn't, wouldn't just say, "Oh, well, that's tough," you know. Sure. We're, sure. We're, you know, you can have to suffer the consequences. Oh, no, I'm not saying know, any, that, that's yeah. kind of bad, isn't it? It's not. That's not a kind of a caring social policy, is it? No, no, absolutely. So I, I agree with all that. I mean, as Christians, we are caring also for society as well. And um, so I don't mm. see, I agree with all the aspects, you know, so the, the only... But how, but how would you respond to a, a regular cocaine user who, you know, a responsible professional who takes it every <laughs> Friday evening? I, I, I've been taking it for, I've actually heard people say this, yeah, brother. I'm not making just, this stuff up. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the problem with cocaine, you know? And I come along and say, well, look, it's done all this harm. Look at these people who are drug addicts. Yeah, 
but they, they, they lack self-control. They need to be individually responsible for their behaviour. That's why yeah. it's not a problem. Oh, no, Therefore, I'm, cocaine should be legal. Sure. No, how no, how would you respond to that? We're cocaining, but we're, we're not talking about cocaine. I mean, no, this for example, let's no, it's talk an about analogy. It's an analogy. Oh, right. uh, we're, 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 alcohol is a, so alcohol is a drug. You say. Alcohol us. is a alcohol is a drug. Cocaine is a drug. And so I'm giving an example of something that. You might agree, actually, it's not good so to legalise drugs. we can mis mis abuse, you know, a cigarette, yeah. McDonald's, you know, people who have uh, too like, much of... They, no, no, they, they ruin their health. The cigarettes are unnatural, that they kill people. McDon if I have a Big Mac, it's not going to kill me. Uh, if I have a Big Mac once a week, it's not going to kill me. But if I take cigarettes regularly, I might die of cancer. Right. So one is potentially lethal. Right. McDonald's is not lethal uh, unless you take it in oh, extraordinary excess. Gluttony. Does yeah, but that's different. Lead to, uh, the, 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 not, regular consumption of McDonald's is not going to kill you. But regular t taking of heroin or cigarettes will apparently kill you. A, a very, very high chance of that. Yeah. The only reason why I brought this up, as I said, I just found it a bit of a contradiction that you could drink in heaven, I think but, not this, but it's fine. It's, it's, it's Different. Yeah, not, I mean, that yeah. was, that was this, 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 I didn't want a big debate no, about it. Like just... I think you're thinking wrong. That's my reason. But for example, in Islam, the meta narrative, I'm not very different to Christianity, the meta narrative in Islam is this life is a test. That's uh, the meta narrative. I, I, I like that. It, meta narrative. It, 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 it is. It's, it's a big like, theme yeah. in the Quran. So, yeah. And everyone conformed to yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah. for example, another problem with evil with Christianity struggles with to this day, mm -hmm. it's never a problem in Islam. Because mm -hmm. if it's a perfect thing about a narrative, a narrative of this life is a test. That's how you relate it back when you try to confirm it. It's yeah. a criterion. And Christianity is a big problem because the whole idea of Jesus Christ came to atone for us and that's one thing about it. So can that, what, how does that explain that people are still suffering and what were the people? I think something like why Islam makes sense. Sorry, I, I don't even remember. I think there's oh, some oh, cameras there. So it's it's, just for their point. Yeah. Islam yeah, is not called... So it's like Christianity, for example. It's called Christianity named after Jesus Christ. It's called what, sorry? It's named Christianity after Jesus Christ, yes. right? Judaism is named after Judah, right? right. Buddhism is named after Buddha, right? And Confucian after Confucian, so on and so forth. Because all these people start with these people, right? right. Islam is not called Mohammedans, is it? Right. We're called Islam because the narrative, meta narrative starts with Adam and Eve Salam. The first three people, wait one second, yeah. that's our narrative. So our narrative starts with the first three people, uh, Adam and Eve Salam, order to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As all our prophets would use the Bible as Christians, would share most of us, the Bible, right? And now we are coming towards the end of times. That's our meta narrative. Life is a test. Now, if life is a test of life and God forbids us to have, for example, alcohol or forbids us from having zina or forbids us from um, all these things, right? And maybe he releases some of them into the next life. Let's say, for example, alcohol, electric alcohol, because now the intoxication has been taken out of it. There's no more hangover. All the negative things taken out of it. Where is the contradiction? Can you sure, say the contradiction? Sure. So, okay. contradiction? So first of all, it, it, to be quite honest, it wasn't even about the alcohol. You know what my biggest problem is? Is where we give our minds over to, you know, priests, imams, politicians, kings, and let others do the thing. You know, scientists, professors. I agree. Letting other people do the thinking for us. See, what I appreciated about Jesus Christ was he was trying to empower us to be able to think for ourselves. Can you give an example? <laughs> uh, uh, you say that, that's very interesting, but can you give an example from the Gospels where he does just that? Say that again. Can you give an example? You said Jesus uh, came to empower us. Uh, can you give an example from the Gospels? Ab absolutely. I mean, it was one of his biggest messages. So when he saw like the people, um, he called them like sheep that was sort of trodden on and mistreated. And he was condemning the religious leaders for overburdening them. And he said to the people to come to me, I will lighten your burden. Mm -hmm. um, he said there will be a freedom in Christ, meaning that there's a boundary. Of course, we need like you. So, so just to interrupt. Where did he say that there's a boundary in Christ? And where did Jesus in, in say this? John chapter uh, five or six, uh -huh. around there, there's uh -huh. a, a whole section yep. which is entitled "The Freedom in Christ." <laughs> And well, but what does Jesus say? Because uh, obviously that, that's a human. That, yeah, that, that's so a later uh, 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 scriptural addition. Uh, sorry, editorial uh, addition to the text in John. So, what was Jesus portrayed as saying in John's gospel? So, what he's yeah. to paraphrase, yeah. he's, he's essentially saying that we have a we have a right to. For example, I'll give you a clear example. They condemned Jesus for healing on the Sabbath. Mm. You know, they were like. You know, you can't do that. And, and he, he, he did. And so he broke a major law. And what he was showing was we've got to use our thinking, you know, our critical thinking and oh, not. Yeah, that's all it was. So he's just trying to ask. He's saying, look, the law is so important of God, but ultimately everything hangs upon love of God and love of neighbor. And he's helping us 
to just work by principles. So we're not on just milk. See, I call religion like a mother that sort of feeds us milk. And Apostle Paul said we need to latch off like, you know, like mother, you know, like when mother gives us breast milk and to move on to something called like solid food where we can distinguish for ourselves what's right and wrong. Okay, what, what, what was the gospel message? Okay, thank you for clarifying that. But what, what is the gospel that Jesus preached? What, what did he go around Galilee actually preaching, do you think? Oh, okay. So what was his uh, message? Yeah, because he, he said at the beginning of Mark, for example, you know, uh, 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 he, he's come to preach the gospel, the good news, the, the Injil or whatever, to uh, the people. What, what was that message? The message was of salvation, ultimately. Mm -hmm. See, I feel his me real message was what we all want. We want to get as close to God as possible. No, no, but so, so, uh, oh, uh, but was it wasn't so much of your interpretation of what you think the message was. What did he say the message was? Can you tell me what he said? Because oh, no, I can tell you what Muhammad said. Oh, he he was, said, oh. believe in one God, right. there, there's, a, you know, there's yeah. an afterlife, oh, sorry. Uh, and treat your neighbours well. No, but I, was, I can give you detail. What's the message, what's the what, what's the actual message oh, of Jesus? When he went around Galilee saying, Galileans, believe X. What was his yeah. message? The ultimate message was to yeah. love God, his uh -huh. father, right. and for us to be as close to him as possible. Right. And this is why I'm saying, like, what I find with a lot of organised like religions. But you're part right. of no religion, you're Christian, right? Um, so I, I, I don't. <laughs> Sorry, That's not very nice, I'm standing there laughing. Um, yeah. Just the point about loving yeah. God and loving your neighbour. Uh, yeah. When and Jesus did say that, according to the Gospels, you are aware, of course, that these are actual quotes from the Old Testament law yes. itself. Yes. So Jesus didn't make up these ideas. The idea of no, loving I, your neighbour is a quote from Leviticus. Yes. It's actually part of the Old Testament law. The idea of loving God, above all, is in the Jewish law. So th this is not new, no. he's quoting the law of Moses. So he says, within the law, quoting the law, oh, wow. which says love God and love your neighbour. And I think so, that's a beautiful so, thing, yes. Uh, uh, he never uh, uh, came uh, to destroy anything. He was fulfilling, uh, really, the law. Really? Meaning, like so so he, he didn't come to abolish the law. But Paul, of course, in Ephesians, in chapter 2, verse 15, says that Christ came to abolish the law uh, with all its commandments and ordinances. But according to Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus says, do not think I've come to abolish the law and its commandments. The direct opposite of what Paul claimed in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. You can look it up now if you want. H how do we account for this big discrepancy between yeah. what Paul said, who never met Jesus, of course, and what Jesus said according to Matthew? I, I believe it's a misunderstanding because uh -huh. Jesus came to fulfill the law, which means like, I mean, when he fill up a cup, he was really filling it to the full. And what I'm trying to say is like, the law was very important. I'm not sure what that means. So, I'm, so I'm trying to explain it. Yeah, you are saying Jesus came to fulfill the law, but Paul said something else, right? Then Paul said he came yes. to abrogate the law. Yeah, to abolish the law. So which one do you believe? Paul or Jesus? No, but this is what I'm trying to explain to you. Presumably Jesus got it right, because he knew, cause he yeah. was obviously the, the yeah. one sent oh, by God. Sense. So Paul then misunderstood Jesus uh, fundamentally, because Paul claimed that Jesus abolished the law and his commandments and ordinances, and yet according to Matthew, Mark and Luke, Jesus said he'd not come to abolish the law at all, but to, as you put it, fulfill it. But fulfill doesn't mean abolish, so, so the question is, for example, should we eat pork? No, so... When, okay, so should, should, should okay. followers of Jesus but eat pork? But you have pork? to let me... Have an answer the question? Yeah, carry on. Oh, so he didn't mean to abolish the law completely. All he was trying to do was, was to actually help us to, to move on from the law, to be able to think for ourselves. It goes back to my point earlier. Think for ourselves. Where, sorry? Think for ourselves. Yeah, well, so... You said earlier, I'm not sure. I don't remember what you were saying, law. but you think for ourselves. Came, Jesus came to hold up the law, you said earlier. Sorry? You said Jesus came to hold up the law, yes. you said the laws earlier. But now you're saying Jesus did this chaos kind of situation where he figured something out of his own rationality, and now Jesus is saying, think for yourself, right? So the law is not really the law, it's just a principle to follow, right? That sounds more mythological. No, so what all he wants us to do is, is not to be like robots or zombies where we're kind of you know dictated by the you know just black and white like don't do this or be yeah because what's happened now what's is, the first commandment don't make that, that, hang on can we just cover get, 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 can we just get, uh, can i give an example right. about eating pork so right. the jewish law says you mustn't eat pork obviously uh, muslims obviously follow the same uh, injunction um and, and Jesus uh, also didn't abrogate or abolish the law according to the earliest Gospels. He upheld the law. He was a Jew. He didn't eat pork. But according to Paul in Romans and other places, all food has been declared clean. So 
who's right here? Is it the Lord Moses and what Jesus taught, or is Paul right? Who are we to follow here? In, in the... Okay, so there I'm was a few confusing. situations like that. There was mm. the whole situation about the circumcision, for example, and there were debates. Mm. And, and what, what Jesus was trying to do was now, he was trying to move us away from being dictated, because as I mentioned at the beginning, the people were being so kind of uh, burdened by all these laws, like I mentioned right. the Sabbath, that he was trying to free us. Like, for example, healing on the Sabbath. They were really trying to, um, you know, trap him with that and say, you healed on the Sabbath. But he's showing the importance was that was to heal and that actually yeah. we have to be uh, sensible. I, I, I agree. It has got nothing to do with the but, question But, but, but the question I ask is not about whether or not you can heal or not. It's about the, right. the law. Okay, yeah. but, yeah. but the reason why I didn't answer the uh, one about pork directly was because this is such a huge subject about the laws. You know, there were no, so many different... One is saying, do this, and the other one is saying, don't do it. So who do you use for that? Paul, or Je it's very simple, or, or Jesus. Who, who carries the greatest word? Jesus or Paul? Just answer that. God himself. No, no, that's not Ultimately. why I asked. I said, Jesus No, but I have answered you. Neither of them. And this was... See, so Jesus is not God. Sorry? So Jesus is not God. He's not the almighty God, no. So, why are we laughing? Sorry, yeah, it's disrespectful. It's disrespectful to laugh. It's disrespectful. I was being rude just now. I was being rude just now. Sorry, there's so many different things there going on. Yeah, but okay, back sorry, back what, back did back what did you ask him? He's really yeah. yeah. Well, as he always proclaimed, he's the son of God. I mean, look, you guys respect Jesus so much. Yeah, can I just clarify what does son of God mean? Because, for example, in Luke chapter 3, Adam is called the son of God. In the Psalms, Psalm 2, David is called son of God. Sure. Jesus is called son of God. So uh, Jesus also said, according to Matthew, yeah. blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called sons of God. So in what sense is Jesus son of God? Is it different from Adam and or something else? Coming to, really. Yeah, I just want to clarify for everyone yeah, yeah. W w why I'm asking this question. I'm not being sure. picky. I'm just trying because if Adam is called son of God yeah. uh, and Jesus is son of God it simply means a human being yeah. in which case we can all say amen to that oh, but, right. but if I you do. mean something more than that there is some do. kind of I do. right so I do. What, what is it what is this more that you think Jesus was well I think he's oh absolutely like he's our I believe he's our savior he's the only way as a mediator for us to find who our almighty God is because right. look a lot of religions like even what I was brought up with make God very distant and it's like we, what I like about Christianity see when I was in my teens my own father my own fleshly father he passed away can, can, can I just uh, uh, going into your personal story here about your father uh, the question was who Jesus was coming back to that coming well if we could just talk about that because if you bring in all this personal testimony about your family there's not really focusing on it the question is who is Jesus now is he is he God for example is he a trinity, part of a trinity? Or? Oh no, well, we no, know trinity wasn't. was a fourth century situation, uh -huh. wasn't it? Like, it, the, the church, this is, see, this is a problem. I'm very honest, man. I like I, you know, This is the thing, like, I'm just saying, like, um, a, the problem with organised religion is a lot of politics and paganism right. gets so, infiltrated. So, 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 so coming, coming back to who Jesus yeah. is, so. Just, yeah, yeah, uh, 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 if, we, if we could just focus on oh, who yeah, Jesus is, so. rather than anything, any, uh, things, things you don't believe about him, what do you believe he is? Uh, okay, you don't believe he's part of a trinity, you don't, yeah. but uh, but he's more than human. Is he part divine, part human, perhaps incarnation? Okay, so exactly what I, I feel, the Almighty, his father. I mean, like you Muslims as well, you believe he's, he, there is one Almighty, and I do as well. Mm. Yes, but I feel he's given Jesus Christ all authority to become a saviour, to become a king. So when he returns, mm. we see that there's a special purpose. See, we see like um, why the Muslims love him. Like, I, I want to ask you, like, what's so special for you as well about Jesus Christ? Right. What do you know about... So, so just to clarify then, before we change the subject, um, so Jesus is just a human being that God has exalted to a very high and, and status. Us, yeah. So he's not in any way divine. He's not God or part of God or... Like he's that. not the almighty God, but right. what I feel is that, that he's been, um, he helps us to understand what the, his father's like, because he said that everything he did, he was in one with his father. So when we see him doing things, like it helps us come closer to the almighty. That's what all he wanted. And I think that's yeah, what that's I not too different from the Islamic understanding, perhaps. Although, I mean, Jesus didn't have many of the attributes of God. He didn't know everything, he didn't know all things, he didn't Absolutely. have day to the end. 
you know, and he wasn't all powerful. And he was human, and he, you know, and so on. So, um, so your 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 views are not what many would consider to be orthodox I know, traditional and, uh, views and, at all. And this is why I had to leave all organised religion. This is what I meant earlier. Okay. Because what he was doing to me was he, he was like putting the glasses on me and I had to then be restricted. And Jesus said he hated all that and he was trying to say, look, he wants to free us. He wants us to get as close to who the Almighty is. So he said, look, don't be trapped by organized religion. Do not trust in any man in whom no salvation belongs. Because we can end up idolizing. Okay, I got trapped in there. You, you know right now it sounds so much like a Muslim. We're saying there's only one God. These prophets came and appointed us towards God. Uh, towards yeah, not yeah. worship no one but God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, Anything, but, the only difference now would be yeah, that yeah. we Muslims believe, like I said, we hold Jesus very high. We believe miraculous just like you do. He's born of a virgin mother, no father. That's uh, apart from, but in the Quran, Allah explains about what? By likening to Adam alayhi salam. Because the Christians make the argument, he has got no father, so therefore his father must be. The Quran, Allah says Adam's name, when he mentions it in a certain surah, as many times Adam. You can try and show, look at Adam. As a Christian, you also believe in Adam, right? He hasn't got a father. So where's the rationale for you saying, oh, one of them a father, therefore his father must be God? When you don't do this for the other, it's not consistent. So the point I'm making is, right now, you definitely sound most, more Muslim than some Christian. Are you still yeah, searching? Yeah, yeah, agree, you know, no, agree, no, no, no. I'll tell you what, agree. when I walk no, away... Are you still searching man, for the truth? Well, my, look, I, I don't want to interject. My, my suggestion to you, yeah. because he used to be a Christian and he studied at the university, yeah. he's a Muslim, speak to him. Oh, no, I am. I am. He, 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 he is. We are, we are. Fear not, fear not. Okay. No, I'm just saying, I was a Christian as well. One of the things I just discovered about the Prophet Muhammad upon whom yeah. it was that his central message was the same message that Jesus has portrayed even in our Gospels now going around preaching and I had to come to choose well if Jesus is sent by God and I really believe that as a Christian what right did I have to say that a man who came after him also came to be a prophet who, who merely claimed to be uh, repeating or reinforcing or confirming the same teaching what right did I have to deny that he was sent by God apart from some Western cultural prejudice that I had, you know, Can about the, the, the Muslims. Yeah. And so I came to the conclusion, once I got over that hurdle, um, that he was a prophet of God because I'd been schooled in the in the biblical understanding of prophethood. And so, you know, if it looks like a prophet, talks like a prophet, walks like a prophet, <laughs> it is a prophet. A prophet yeah. uh, oh. and, and his character matches everything. He, you know, he was like a prophet, an amazing prophet, not just a prophet, but an amazing prophet. And so I accepted that he was a prophet. Um, and I would invite you to the same journey because it's it's not a it's not embracing something new. It, it's the it's the old time religion, the religion that's of Abraham. My problem. Then why the do I need it then? Because if Jesus was everything for us, then where is he? Like I tell you God, like it. is he on no, 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 no. The reason is because Jesus yeah. isn't everything for us. I think that's a mistake. For Muslims, God is everything for us. Uh, oh no, sorry, and, but I meant. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, but obviously, but I established he said, that already. He, yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah, but. We, we don't, we don't, we don't put Jesus on such a pedestal that he becomes more than human. And that's one of the criticisms that the Prophet Muhammad made, what was that don't treat me, Muhammad said, the same way the Christians have treated Jesus. Right. They put him on a pedestal and worshipped him. I'm not saying you're worshipping Jesus, but Christians have done that. Nearly oh, all Christians yeah, so, have done uh, that historically. Uh, of course. So the, the idea is to, is to have a, a correct estimation of who Jesus and Muhammad are. Prophet of God, a great role models. The teaching essentially is the same. But why follow Muhammad? Because he is the, the, the reason is, it's very simple. Jesus said in the Gospels, he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came to confirm the Torah with one or two exceptions where he, he uh, mitigated the law according to the Quran. But overwhelmingly, he, he confirmed the Jewish law for the he Jews. For the world to save John the Five. Uh, I mean, hang, hang on a second. God hang, loved the world so much. Yeah. Sorry. But so just finish it. So he, he came to confirm the law, yeah. but but correctly understood yeah. the spirit of love and mercy and compassion, as you rightly say, yeah. uh, and to do away with the uh, the idolatries that uh, uh, the, the Pharisees and without going into all that. And Muhammad is, is the last prophet, but he was sent to all of mankind, not just to the local people of Judea, and. What he brought, the, the Sharia, the, the, the law, the guidance, was the final guidance for all humanity. So we are obliged to follow what God has sent, namely the last prophet, uh, and all the other prophets too, but all the others were just sent to their particular regions with their particular uh, legal or guidance ways. Well, he, Jesus was just for the Jews. But he wasn't. He, well, actually, no, he said he was. No, I, he, he was it's an actual quote from Matthew chapter 15. He says, so uh, where, where, where Gentile, Gentiles, I'll give you a story. A Gentile woman comes to Jesus and, and, you know, and says, you know, heal my daughter and stuff. And Jesus actually ignored her, according to Matthew, 
uh, and wanted just to send her away. And he said, look, I've not been sent for you. This is according to Matthew. I'm only sent to the Jews, right? Now, Muhammad was sent as a mercy to all of mankind. You know, now, you're, you're, you're not a Jew, none of us are Jews, so we are now following the last prophet, who re really reaffirms the truth about what Jesus taught and did. So it's but nothing new. Jesus kind of, he said there was like, um, yeah, like I quoted John 5, where... Um, Have you, what, like, what, 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 when speaking? you quoted John 5, I missed that. No, well, the what, famous scripture, uh, for God loved the world so much that he mm. sent his only begotten that's John. son. That's John, that's not Jesus exactly. speaking, that's John speaking. Right, but uh, it's not Jesus. It's not speaking. Jesus speaking. Well, it, but in the passage, it doesn't make no difference. No, no, it makes all difference in the world because because there's a problem with the gospels we have today. They're a mixture of the words of Jesus and the words of men, unknown men, because these are anonymous. We don't know who wrote the gospels. I know it says Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but we know we don't actually know who really wrote them. So we've got to be very careful here that we don't mistake the words of men, men. for the words that came from God through the prophets. And, and, and you're saying it doesn't matter. It really does matter because later gospel writers sometimes misunderstood or even made up sayings about Jesus or of Jesus and put them in his mouth. And this is something that's a commonplace of biblical scholarship today. This has been recognized for some time that there are made, there's, they're made up sayings of Jesus even in the gospels. And how do we know they're made up or not? Well, we compare them with what the Quran text is. No, but this is my whole problem with like organized religion. Everyone wants to point a finger at each it's other. Not organized religion. Sorry, I have to finish. Sorry. It's not organized oh, well, not organ <laughs> well, it's just um, Christians against Muslims. Everyone's pointing a finger at no, each other. What you've just discussed, he's giving you a verse where Jesus is speaking and you're given a verse that Paul is speaking, not John is speaking. Yeah. Who carries more no, who carries more weight? Are you gonna believe what Jesus says, because we know this is his word, or are you gonna to believe to a second or third person? That's the question. Because John is saying that, but Jesus is saying, I've only come. I have that, only... is, that is the crux of the question. No, yeah. but when you guys write the Quran as well, isn't it? No, no, like, forget, no, no, forget no, about the Quran. You want, because you you have a dispute right. right here, right? And he pointed out to what Jesus said, and you point out that no, what John said. Now you have to make a decision. Which one gets to prevail? Which one do you prevail over which? No, it, so, got... so what he's trying to say is that the Bible's got corrupt. No, that's not what no, he's no, saying. Trouble, trouble. I know you're saying, but before but you get assuming. there, before you get no. there, answer that specific subject matter, right? He gave you we've a chapter. We've got a conflict between two statements. To the word of Jesus, as he quoted in Matthew, and, Matthew 15, Matthew. where Jesus explicitly right. says, I am not sent to you, Gentiles, and he actually pushes her away, no, actually, but what initially. What we're trying to do is, so is look at the context. See, 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 because of the sake of brevity, yeah. I'm trying to look at the whole context of the Bible and trying to paraphrase. So when you guys it. zoom in to just one part and hold me to that and say, No, do you know why? Because Jesus' word carries more than anybody else in the Bible. So if you're going to gravitate, you should gravitate to Jesus' word. But then, this is the no, thing. Do you agree or disagree? But it's, it's the no, no, Bible you, works as a whole. No, whole okay, the Bible is answer. a complete. But can, can I answer? Yeah. Please. Yeah. It's inspired of God. So ultimately, everything in the Bible, whether, whether it's spoken of Jesus, or from John, or from anyone, is all ultimately inspired of God. So it's not even about Jesus. We're going out. This is what I'm trying to say. See, going even back to the prophet situation, you know, because like you were saying about, you know, Prophet Muhammad and so on. Like, the thing I found difficult was like so many other religions have got their prophets. Like, you know, there's the Mormons, Joseph Smith, and um, when I was a Hindu, there were so many different. These are Christian sects. The Mormons is a Christian sect. They're not a different religion from yours. They're, they're variants on the same religion. It's so different, though. They like, all believe in Jesus and. They die for their but sins. The Mormons believe that. Believe in Jesus as well. No, we don't believe he died um, for our sins. Uh, it's not a Christian sect. Islam is not a Christian sect. It's yeah. a. It's a, it confirms yeah. what Jesus originally yeah. taught. But do you know what? There's so many things we can talk about. But I think one thing we all would love is to get as close as we agree. This is one thing that bonds us that we want to be close to our, our God as possible. And you know why I brought my... Take the word out of my mouth. I know you said, sorry. How did you do that? But this is why I wanted to bring something personal in. I know you guys didn't. Like, I, I thought, we are we are all humans, and I feel I call you brothers. That's why I wanted yeah, to mention, yeah, when, my, when my own father died, and I know you didn't want me to bring anything no, like no, that. It, it, it was, it was a, a different subject. I wanted to focus on what it meant, what Jesus, oh, who, what Jesus was. I want to explain why. Yeah. Okay. No, I think it's sincere, so it should be genuine. No, but that's, to me, it. what Jesus meant, it's because, like, he, Jesus taught me that, that, that God himself becomes my daddy, like a father, and that's so endearing I to so. me. And I lost something, and then I can hold his hand and be close. And I found all other religions, like, even 
like when I look, I'll be honest, I have tried to look into Muslims and my own Hinduism, and, and I find that it takes me further away from that. Well, uh, 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 That's all uh, I want. Uh, 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 to just to say that, that uh, if you read the Quran, I invite you to read yeah. it. Uh, actually, there's some good English translations. You can get them just over over there in that yeah. uh, with Ali Dawa's stall over there. Uh, the Quran uh, often speaks of the closeness of uh, of, of God to uh, the, the Muslim. That He's closer to us than our jugular vein, in fact. And there are many hadiths. These are sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, authentic ones, which speak about the closeness of, of God's mercy towards the believer. So God is very close to the believer, but he's also, there is, a, there is more of an emphasis, I agree, on the transcendence of God in Islam. And I think one of the problems in Christianity is that God, uh, for Christians, becomes, as you put it, the daddy. He becomes like our... our, our oh, they didn't mean that in a rude way. No, sorry. no, no. no, no, no. Let, let me, let me explain. The, the, the God becomes our... I, I said that in a respectful... Sorry. No, the, the, the God becomes... Father is more endearing. Sorry, I didn't... Yeah, 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 no, well, but I'm noticing Christianity generally, God becomes like a, a, like a grandfather figure who just gives sweets out. And is, oh, no, or, sorry. Or, yeah, or God becomes me. so yeah, loving yeah. that he's like our, our best mate. Uh, and uh, is God Almighty rather than God Almighty? And, and, and when I was a Christian, no, it's I, both. That's well, well, Muslims don't agree with that. I, I noticed when I was a Christian, there was a great sense, the emphasis on God as my mate, God Almighty. Oh, and no, and th for, Muslim, thought, yeah. for Muslim ears, this sounds blasphemous. I didn't mean, yeah, yeah, sorry. Because, yeah. because, uh, because God, God is yeah. a God of majesty, glory. Uh, he's nothing like a. Of course. But he's also yeah, imminent and very, very close to us as well. For God, so course, so yeah, there, yeah, there, yeah. Is, there is a closeness to the human being in Allah, in Islam. This is true, but the emphasis is very much on, on his glory and his majesty, but it's also his mercy and his compassion and his love. So you, it's both actually in Islam. In Christianity, I fear that there's such an, uh, uh, an overemphasis on God's nearness and his lovingness that we have a problem when a child is dying of cancer or when there's a tsunami or there's evil in the world. But God is just so, God is love, God is love, God. So, yeah, how, oh, no. how, how can a God be a God of love I hate, that's what I'm when all this happens? So, it's it's nothing to do with organized religion, by the way. Oh, I'm talking is. about Christians when you come out, here. You get to think for yourself. No, no, I'm talking about what Christians think as people. I'm not talking about, I'm just I'm not talking about institutions like, no, here. Sorry? Let me tell you something I've seen from Christianity and Judaism. I used to think like that when I was part of organizing, but now I don't. After yeah. I but even, even say God is our daddy, even, it's like, it, 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 it's, a, it's almost like uh, an inappropriate intimacy with God. Oh, yeah. It's just like my daddy. Yeah. No, no, God is, God is God your amazing. creator and your Lord. He is, before but is do your you know daddy. why I said uh, that? This is, this is, I think you made a good point, because I've noticed the same thing on other Christians, right? Even when we are seen so far. In Christianity, there seems to be this emphasis on God's Love, love, yes. love, love. Which and is only is love. Once, once and, only is love. and you see people nowadays where they don't follow none, none of what's in the yeah. Bible, they don't follow none of the laws. When we speak to them, I got a lot of friends who are Christian. I ask all the time, I really like the They go to the church when yeah, it's time for one, one second. When it's time to go to for a wedding or New Year's. But I don't really take that serious. When I ask them, they say it's all fine because God's all love, all love. Then I want to speak to my Jewish friends. That's why I'm condemning all that. Then I speak to my Jewish friends. And my Jewish friends, they're too much just law, law, law. Practical, practical. Exactly. That's why I've got. My Jewish friends, they're very much like, Islam know, is the middle way between the two extremes. Yeah. That's what I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the middle yeah, way. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Yeah, but yeah. I think that this is where I found the middle way is easy to say, but I find what happens is a lot of times is we worship God out of fear then and not out of love. And that's yeah, but fear point. is good. The Quran says, <laughs> sorry, the, the Bible says the beginning of wisdom is the yeah, fear of the Lord. Power. This yeah. is God speaking according sure, to you. Sure, so sure. when you say this is not right, yeah. you're actually there's condemning a your own scriptures. Fear, and there's a, exactly. uh, a fear which is not exactly. healthy, which I find a lot of um, people, they're kind of like um, doing things where their hearts removed. See, God wants a full heart. Can I tell you again, please. you know Islam for my reason? of Islam, God's two biggest attributes yeah. are his mercy, which you could say love and all these things there, yeah. and his justice, which you could say is wrath and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. I like the idea of a just God. Me too. I like the Me idea too. of someone like Adolf Hitler, Me someone too. horrendous, who did terrible things, Me who too. didn't pay the consequences of his life, Me might too. have a great life, but God pays attention. But for God to do that, he has to be just. Yeah. Just can sometimes not be nice. Sure. And, and, and that's the thing with Islam as well, like Islam. I think Islam is very transparent. We don't hide yeah. nothing. No. You want something, you very get clear. it. Very clear. At the front, I agree. Stepping, you know what you're getting. In Christianity, I feel like there's a lot of like turn the other tree yeah. and this and that. Uh, and for example, like in this, in this idea of uh, priests not having no sex and being celibate, right? And then we see all these, I don't want to go into detail. Whereas Islam, they don't need hypocrisy in the first place. God knows even people have biological needs, so on and so forth. La, la. The point I make Islam, we're very honest. 
And I think sometimes you feel yeah, cushioned. These problems version. are happening in all religions. So you're not Orthodox Christian. Sorry? You're not an Orthodox Christian. You've come to your own realisation. After stepping away, um, you know... I'm so yours is more subjective. Yeah, there were so many more things I wanted to say. Sorry? It's not subjective. No, no, no. no. Sorry. I think it's good to be close to Sorry? No, what is that? It's not subjective. It's stepped away because you're relying on your own personal interpretation, which is different. And this only is a problem because there is a path that's been given to us by the prophets of God. We've been invited to walk on. But you guys make accusations. No, I'm just clarifying with his brother here. No, there's so many other things I forgot. Go on, go on. I think it's important that if we're so individualist and we're just doing things of our own intelligence, our own understanding, that there is actually a path that God has given us to follow, the, the, the path of the Sunnah of the Prophets, which is, which is a God-given path. And if we just do our own thing, which I know in our age is all the fashion, it's so easy to be misled and, and have wrong ideas. So I think it was better if we walk on the path of the Prophets. So what I mean by that is that the Prophets gave examples from their life and how to behave, from their character, the way they spoke to people, their decisions and so on. This is the most excellent path to follow, rather than just following on, on what we feel because of our own no, but experience. You got me wrong. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, of course, then listen, I'm sorry. following the path of Jesus. I'm using the Bible as a, you know, criteria. every yes, of course. But, but where is your denying. Torah observance? Where is your Torah observance? Because if you're following Jesus, the actual Jesus of Nazareth was a Torah observant Jew. It clearly states that in the Gospels. But you're not a Jew. You're not following the Torah. Presumably you eat pork. Am I right? Right. So, so, uh, presumably you eat pork. Christians usually do there's so many things we jump in i see that we no, were but talking I'm saying about it it's earlier. not easy for a person today unless they're a muslim by the way to follow jesus because the, the islamic uh, path is actually the, pretty much the same as the jewish uh, the christian sorry the path of jesus i should say christians actually have by and large abandoned the law but Jesus didn't abandon the law. He was a practicing Jew. He's what we would call an Orthodox Jew today. But Christians have abandoned all that. They're not following Jesus. They're following their own idea of a gentilized, westernized uh, Christian Christianity, which is actually nothing to do with Jesus. Actually. We're not saying you. No, but sure. Muslims, We're not saying you. We're yeah, but about Christian. Why not we, the one thing I discovered was problem. that Muslims are the only yeah, ones who are following right. Jesus. No, no, yeah. but we're talking personal. I don't understand why we attack people. See, this is why I find the problem in Speaker's Corner, where everyone's here to debate and attack I each other where where why were we doing that like why if you know because it's speaker's about, corner yeah. speaker's corner i know but I'll why make corner. speaker's corner, corner like no. that it's no. not what god i don't no, no. think no, if, if you right. if you know yeah if you know anything about this gentleman he doesn't attack anybody yeah, but I wasn't um, attacking a person. I was, no, no, I, 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 was, I, I was just saying that. But when Christians say to follow Jesus, and it's, it's a sincere point, I think the historical Jesus was. Well, I am because I'm talking about Christians. Christians. Uh, I'm generalising. So yeah. Why not talk about? Uh, I thought we were having a conversation. Well, well okay. no, but I asked you several because times, and you, you, you never actually ever answered me. So I'll try it one, one more time. Do you eat pork? Well. Why are we so focused? This is okay. why I'm trying. You see, you won't answer the question. Is, is no, this, the, this is not a personal attack. I'm just trying to illustrate. Oh, are you, do you eat pork? No. Why not? Because I'm a Muslim. Yeah, but because okay. it's law. Fair enough. Okay. All right. <laughs> the question is, the question is, did, did Jesus eat pork? Did Jesus yes. eat pork? Sorry. No, no he didn't, didn't, by the way. He didn't know eat pork. You know so if we're following yeah. Jesus, do we do we follow oh, well, his example? Anyway. Maybe practice. we'll have a conversation. No, no, let's speak more positive, boss. It's like a misunderstanding going on right now. But just speak more positive, boss. Right? Well, let's try about, let's try to accommodate to his chance. Okay. Because this is a more personal conversation. He wants to be less debated, right? He's just making a point about a general Christian, not about you. He's too much. So don't take that person, right? He's talking about a general Christian out there. So. I think yeah. we're going to questions you, you want to talk about. Well, I feel like yeah, no, there are so many different things we've been jumping on. No, no, that's all right. No, no, no. He's just seen someone else. Yeah. 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 All for me it was, was just trying to have a conversation about what we feel and understand. Yeah. And to me, as I Absolutely. said, one thing we share is that we want to be as close to God as possible. And and I think the reason why I don't want to be diverted into debates is because I find that in a general, lot of, sorry, in general, sorry, They're in general, a lot of times there are a lot in general. This yes, is, this what is happens is generous. that no one wins, and then I think the devil wins because he gets the truth. I, I'm like, not sure. I agree. I mean, this is having a debate about whether or not we should debate, but I, I, I think it, it does matter because if I say something like Jesus was a Torah observant Jew. And that's not just my feeling or how I feel about Jesus, but I believe that is objectively historically true. Um, I could be wrong, and I, I, I'm very happy so to be... So why did he break the Sabbath? To, uh, very, he didn't. Uh, but he healed on the Sabbath. Okay. Oh, sorry. okay, well, let's talk about that particular 
What law did he break on the Sabbath? Which specific law did well, he break? Well, they were trying to say that he, he healed and um, mm. they were holding him, you know, for that, wasn't yeah. it? That but what law did he... I'm not, sorry, the question is what law specifically did he break, do you think? I can't remember exactly. Right. Remind because, me, sorry. Well, because he didn't break any law. <laughs> That's the point. Now, let me explain but why to you... were they trying to... Oh, let me explain what. Because the, the Jews... Sorry, the fa some of the Pharisees have put a hedge around the law. Uh, it happens only in the Sharia, to some extent. Yes. So, so it wasn't actually that the law he broke, but, but their understanding of not working on the Sabbath, yeah. which is not actually defined in any detail in the Torah, if you read it yeah. today, although it is in the Oral Torah, but that's not in the Old Testament, yeah. it doesn't mention any law that he allegedly broke. But the Pharisees felt that what he was doing, because of their interpretation of the law, right. which is very strict, any activity at all on the Sabbath was haram. But it didn't actually break any commandment, if you could tell me that to me doesn't exist. That's why okay. I asked that. Now, I appreciate so, so you the saying that, yeah. The point is here, this is why debate can sometimes uncover, or discussion can uncover these things. Sure. So Jesus didn't break the law. He, he transgressed against the Pharisees' extremely strict understanding of the, the hedge around the law. And Jesus basically saying, I don't agree with your interpretation. I have a much more different interpretation. Sure, but this is my problem, that what happens with all organized religion, like they, See, that's my whole thing. Like, for example, there's a lot of ideas which has infiltrated organised religions, like I said before, from paganism and like, like hellfire. You know what you were saying about God, like torture and that. And I think like, you know, you were saying how God... Why are you saying that? You're, you're doing is you're superposing your view of what your religion onto what other religions did. Like, we well, said it's true about Christianity, and it's demonstrated yeah. with truth. That's not true with Islam, ah. for example. So I don't think it's fair for you to say religion. Oh, right? okay, sorry. You're, you're, you're kind of like superposing your experience with uh, Maybe I got it wrong. I thought you that's guys That's the whole point of Islam. Ah, okay. The whole point of Islam is we are seeing what you're saying. Muslims believe in hellfire ah, as well. Ah, we're, we're, we're seeing what you're saying. Muslims believe in hellfire, yeah. It's, it's there in the Quran. We're saying Christianity, ah. Judaism have been changed. They've been corrupted. Paganistic, Roman, yeah. Hellenistic things have gone into it. Nowadays, as you were told, you biblical scholarship will confirm that. Like, there's clear development. It's beyond reasonable doubt at this point, right? Islam has been saying since the beginning. And we're saying Islam is the preserved word of God. You already believe in God. You believe in one God, like we're saying Jesus is not God, right? Yeah. You believe in messengers, you believe in Moses, you well, believe in when Jacob. When you say, I don't believe he's the almighty God, so when but I you say, believe he's a God, a little God. Well, he is a God. No, you believe like, he's a God. A little God. I think, I think, I think, <laughs> well, not, no, 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 little. That's what I'm getting from him. From, from, from the oh, beginning, I came here. Let's, that's what I've got. Let's not get stuck on words, because he's got misconception yeah. of the word prophet. That's all it is. He's got misconception. Because the prophet okay. is no, higher God than normal. No, 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 because he's right. A prophet is higher than normal human being, right? The prophet is in contact with yeah. Allah. Yeah, Allah. Yeah, he's given revelation. Yeah, right. So I agree with an aspect that prophet Jesus was above the normal average person. I agree with an aspect. Not normal, not normal bloke. But everything you're saying is Islamic so far. And now you're complaining about organized religion being corrupted. No, you've missed the point. No, one second, one second. You, you agree, that's all the things that I agree with Islam, right? And then you're making a no, point. No, he disagrees and, and, with Islam because he's no, saying no, no, Jesus. No, 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 no. Forget the prophet from the part. The point is he agrees that as prophet. You believe Jacob is the prophet of God, right? You believe Abraham's prophet of God, right? Yes. You believe God had his prophet sent down. But he believes Jesus is divine. No, 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 he doesn't. Like, no, he let's didn't, get stuck on that. Let's get stuck on that. Okay. The point okay. is, right now he's saying everything is Islamic, right? And then the critique you make an end of all organized religion is Islamic. That's what we're saying about other religions. Everything you say is Islamic, but I say it's Islamic. You sure. understand where I'm coming from? Sure. But is to Jesus me... divine? Just my clarity. Is Jesus divine to you? Okay, so. No, is he, yes or no? Is he divine? Yeah, yeah, divine yeah. as not as the Almighty. It's, it's all a bit messy, isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah, not divine. Too many, too many things he's down. divine, yeah. but not don't as don't the Almighty. Don't ask me. Don't ask me. Yeah, focus in here. Don't ask me. Well, he can speak to, he can speak, he can speak, he can speak to who you want to, by the way. You're getting too much. But yeah, there's too much going on. Yeah, I think we had a long conversation already, haven't we? Yeah, I agree. I appreciate that. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah. What's your name again? No, Tim. Tim, Tim. nice to meet you, Tim. Nice guy, though, Tim. Well, look, I'll mean, be really sincere. Don't change up, man. Like, you're asking some honest questions. Don't try to have no group with us, with yeah. them, what not. Yeah. Forget everyone. Pick up by yourself and what's lying beyond the grave because you're going to die alone. Absolutely. Now, for me, like I said to you, like, I don't want to be distracted yeah. from who God is. And I just find that. Um, I know you guys are all right sincere, now. but if I get involved with any organised religion, it becomes like it, it, it overtakes, it, it puts a middleman. Yeah.
between me and the you know, creator. But the irony is, uh, it's not a point directed at you, of course, but Christians generally do believe in a middleman. They believe between them and God. It's called Jesus. I but where in Islam, you go straight, straight to God, to God. Yeah. without any priests or middlemen yeah. at all, even Sorry, Jesus. what I meant was by middleman, is, yeah. like I said before, do not trust in any man in whom no salvation belongs. So I meant as humans, like... Um, and that's the problem like when they start telling us how we should be praying you know like when i pray to god i talk to him like i'm a son and i really like give him but i i, I don't want to like for example if i have to pray facing a certain direction like i don't know what i would be saying because i've been to mosque and it's all in like arabic and i don't understand like what Maybe I could ask, like, if we, I we can learn. I learned. Uh, I, I can. I, I can pray. Uh, Sir so, uh, Fatih Her, which is the most common. I but what do understand you say the Arabic because I like to just say. But, but 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 Muslims have. Uh, sorry, Jews have set prayers. Jesus had set prayers. They prayed to. They, they didn't face to Mecca. They faced to Jerusalem. They still do. So Jesus' own religion had set prayers that faced Jerusalem. Muslims follow a similar pattern by facing Mecca. Although originally Jesus, they did. Originally they did face Jerusalem, and then they changed it. Like um, so, he said. That he, um, to not to pray like over and over again and yeah. he's, he, he gave us the freedom he condemned people you know who are praying under trees and that and kind of making themselves look like they're so devout but or doing the beads and saying the same things over and over again because God really wants us the tr you know like the true it's the same teaching in Islam if, if you're doing if you fast during Ramadan and you're doing it uh, just for uh, ulterior motives or whatever. You're not doing it from, from the niyat with sincerity. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not accepted by God. God doesn't accept your fast. So this idea of sincerity and, and genuineness towards God is there in the heart of Islam as well. We agree. Jesus is a Muslim prophet in Islam. He's, a, he's one of our prophets. He's not some Jewish guy out there. He's one of our prophets. So we embrace what he teaches. He's one of our prophets. But this is the thing, like... You know, the, I appreciate the, you the guys. Paul described. Yeah. You can't tell them outwardly. It's only between you and this is yeah, yeah. yeah. And and for us, prayer is kind of almost split into two. There's the salat, which is the you know the prayer that you do with all the bowing and all that kind of thing. That, that's called, that's all part of what's called dikr. Yeah, you're you're you're, you're, you're saying the you know remembrance. remembrance of Allah. Within that, there's that the dua. Yeah, which is where you're supplicating to God, where you're asking for things, you know. Um, That's what you do. You do in Islamic, you do dua. So you're just praying spontaneously, naturally to God, rather than in, in a formal way five times a day. That's what in Arabic is called dua. Yeah, it just but, means prayer. But he, that's what I thought Jesus meant. He's lightening our burden because I don't want to be running off at certain times. I don't mean no disrespect to anyone, but you know, like if it's rigid certain times no, of the that's day. That's what well, you're looking I for. pray so many times to God. But, 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 but Jews mm -hmm. pray three times a day themselves. So, so, but what does it matter? Like, and Jesus did that. Jesus there, went up to the temple is, to pray. So he did it too. Part, part of what we need to do as Muslims really have brain, right? is come together to with what's called an umrah. Like and to have set times of prayer yeah. where any restriction on the like same the thing at the same like time. Yeah. Conformity. Sponta yeah, he yeah, wants yeah, all spontaneous. Together. And will you explain to her, it's very spontaneous. You just understand. The trouble is, if I do things spontaneous in religion, I'm going to go wrong. I'm going to make a mistake. We need guidance from God himself. Exactly. submit. That's why Islam is called submission. And he won't submit. He won't submit. There's nothing to say that he doesn't, but when we when we do all those kind of things, sorry, again. sorry to disturb you. Sorry, uh, sorry to disturb you. Sorry? I want to ask you one question. Uh, I'm supposed to be talking to this guy, so it might be a bit rude if I just stop talking to him. Sorry. Uh, yeah. um, just to kind right. of dig into it. All right. Anyway, so Tim, good yeah, to see you. Likewise, yeah. All right. And, um, Thank you yeah, for thanks. your time. Very oh, interesting. Thank you. Yeah, but we, we can, I, I, we can continue the conversation.